lift our hands this morning. Just um, surrenderance as, as a sign of surrenderance, or, but even more like an empty, uh, an openness would be a better word. Father, we open our hearts to you today. The hard places, the heavy places, the places where we need to hear just a way of surrendering uh, to you, looking, honoring you. We honor you this morning. We honor you in this place. We worship you with our lives, with our words of our mouth, with, with our, our very being. We honor you today. We give you glory. And Father, we thank you for speaking to us, your children today, for answers, for insight, for direction, correction, transformation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This morning we're going to talk about paths. You can grab a chair this morning. We just got back uh, from Florida for five days. Oh, watch out. All right. And so we were on a path on Sunday afternoon and on a path yesterday. And, um, you know, I'm going to just kind of start it out by this. We're going to, uh, we'll just kind of feel our way through this, all right? Um, but one thing about if you've ever taken a road trip, there's exits. And thank God for navigation. How many of you remember taking road trips where you just printed out the map and, you know, okay? And that can be fun, but can also be stressful, right? Um, and, but, but with this navigation, um, how many of you know you still oftentimes need to be watching? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like you're coming, maybe let's say you're going into, um, I don't know, let's say you're going to, into Memphis or you're going into Little Rock and you're not real familiar with it. Well, you might have to go 30, 630, what, like, and it's like stay in the lane, second lane from left, right? And there's this direction that comes that you have to be attentive. Even though there's a way, even though there's a navigation, you still have to pay attention. And um, because sometimes uh, in life when we take an exit, uh, when we take a path that wasn't part of the plan, it'll take us further than we want to go, you know, and it'll keep us longer than we want to stay. You've heard that before. That's a lot like uh, our own ways. It's a lot like sin. Take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay. But how many of you know there's always a way back? Thank you, Lord. And so we're, this morning we're going to talk about paths. We're going to talk about, um, there, there, there's really not a, one of a thousand paths. There's two paths. There's God's path and there's your path. And so um, since we are going to be, this morning is actually a service where um, we're, we're still in a series that we started a couple weeks back, Brighter and Brighter. And the, the passage for that series is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Now the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter, right? Even, and so we talked, we called this series Brighter and Brighter, uh, even to the, the fullness of noonday. Um, and we're going to get to the place of talking about the brightness or the glory of God, the path that God designed for you and me, but it seems like we're still stuck on the path. We're not moved into the righteousness or, or the brightness. Um, we're stuck on the path. And I really believe um, the path uh, is is so key, and you and I understanding the path uh, is so key for you and I, every part of our lives. This applies to everything in our life, the path. We talked on week one, we talked about um, how so many times we look on the path rather than the destination, and you know, we dumped out some rocks, and if you keep your eye on the tacos, come on, right, you'll, you'll keep, you know, in other words, the destination, you'll, you won't grow tired on that path. And we talked about testifying of the, of the promise more than telling us about the rock on the path. Because um, otherwise you'll just hang up there. And then last week we talked about not growing weary in well-doing and how, um, how we can grow tired 
um, and, and how God wants us not to. But today we're going to continue on the path, but we're really going to talk to seniors. Today's a, a service where we're going to, um, you know, they had they had senior prom or prom last night, which is cool. Um, but they're graduating here just very, very shortly. And we thought it would be good to, uh, as they transition into another season of their lives, it would be good to um, not only pray over them, but also felt like it was the Lord saying, I want you to talk on a message just for them. Now, if that's you, if you're a senior, I want to talk to you right here, down front and center. Uh, Pastor Austin, Pastor Amy, you could come down and sit in our chairs too. That'd be sweet. And I like, I love that. I, you can stay on this side because these guys right here, I think this is cool. Uh, ben and Joni uh, Piersack, they, they stood at, at a lot of these guys, uh, youth pastors for years. So um, it's pretty cool. So that's kind of a cool deal. super cool. And so I believe God has a message for you guys today. I believe it's for this whole house though. It's amazing how um, there are times in our lives when seasons take place. Transition. But there's other times in our life when seasons are not as much as a season as it is a decision. How many of you know that there are seasons in life that we like to say sometimes, oh I'm just in this season. We're in a season but really we're not so much in a season, we're in a decision. Have you ever been there? Well, I'm just in this season of life. Sometimes we give this, we give, we give uh, credence or we give uh, like basically allowance to this season that is hellacious or causes me to not do what I want to be doing because of a decision. And it's not a season of life, it's a decision of life. And that decision could be changed, but some reason we get this, this word um, of, of let your yes be yes and your no be no as being more important than even lordship. I gave my word, I gave it, made a decision, though it was not under the lordship and I didn't check with my master, but I gave my word, so therefore I'm gonna continue to do, you know how easy it is? Uh, to make a, make an adjustment from your decision is 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 just it's as easy as changing shoes. So this morning, I got some shoes on, like these Jordans. They're not mine. We were on vacation, and my middle son Samuel, he's graduated into size 12. And wouldn't you know it? That's my size. So I just made a decision to do what I wanted to do this morning because I thought it would fit the message pretty good. I made a decision to put on somebody else's shoes without asking them and wear them because it really doesn't matter because, well, my shoes. My shoes, my life. My shoes, really, these are his shoes. But we treat our lives sometimes like this is my life. But this is not my life. Is this your life? It, this is, it's not her life. It's not my life. If I'm born again. If I'm born again, it's not my life. My, my body, my choice, right? Is that what it is? It's his body, his choice. And these decisions that we make sometimes that take us into a place we, don't, we shouldn't be, we're not meant to be, um, it's so, so easy by just decisions can, here's what you do. Just like that. Yeah, but I might have to teach without um, shoes on. I might look like an idiot. I mean, everybody's wearing shoes, so that's what I need to be doing. Maybe. Or maybe you should ask and say, can I wear these shoes? Are these shoes for me? We had this conversation yesterday in the car about our bodies not being our own, and we brought up this thing of shoes. And so I knew, actually I knew, because of a conversation I had somewhere between Little Rock and home, about these shoes, about wearing them tomorrow at church. And so I asked Samuel, Samuel, can I wear your shoes? And what did you say? He said, no. But I did it anyway. I did it anyway. Did you know he noticed as soon as I got here with these shoes on, he noticed it, but he didn't even just notice. What he noticed was a spot. He's... He said, Dad, he, Dad, Dad, you got, Dad, you already got a mark on him. And I said, buddy, that was when you came over and hit me, stepped on your shoes. He's like, whatever. He said, just take care of him. 
And so, in that God to us, just take care of him. This is what his thoughts are about you and me. He, he doesn't want your life to be marked up, to be messed up, to be hurt, to be damaged. Yeah, he can restore. Yeah, he can wipe them off. I told him I was going to maybe take him on pig hunting. And uh, he said, no. I said, can't you just wash them off and clean them? I mean, that's what we do with the Lord, right? And he's like, yeah, but it just doesn't seem like it'll be the same, you know? Kind of, kind of true. So in this season that you're going into, Danny, Caleb, Trenton, skipping some, there's decisions. And there's decisions that could take you pig hunting or decisions that could keep you in a place that um, God designed for you. One that's so bright, one that's so wonderful, one that's so good. And uh, it's your choice. It's your choice. And so I want to talk to you just about how to make a decision this morning, some choices. And so really everything we're going to talk about, everything from offering uh, and beyond is about, is about choices, one or the other. What are you going to choose? What are you going to choose? And um, so we, I wanted to start it off, and uh, I have $100 for one of the seniors if, and I don't know that you will be able to do this, but a lot of us would be able to do this. You've heard this, but you might not know the author. If you can tell me the author of this poem, since we're talking to seniors and you're almost done with school, you're not done just yet, I'm going to read you a poem, and it has an author. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth then I took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear though as for those uh, though as for that the passing there had warned them really about the same and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere in ages hence. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. You ever heard this poem? Two roads Somebody, somebody help me out. Who? No, not CS. Robert Frost. Two roads. There's two, there's two roads that diverge. And he talks about, I'm going to be telling this story with a sigh in ages hence. And maybe if you had class, uh, literature class, uh, back in our, my day, they would have literature class and we would discuss. He, he said, I'm going to be telling this with a sigh. Is this a sigh of relief? Is this a sigh of which path did he take? Because he said they seemed the same, yet he took the one less trodden, yet he went on one. Like, and so there's this, 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 it's all of these, this story uh, uh, or a poem, and ultimately there's one or two choices. And he said, but again, uh, the consensus of the class was, well, he took the one less traveled by, and it seems the one that was less traveled is often the, the one that is the best way because it's the narrow way, and that, you know, and, and that made all the difference. All right, so here's this poem, and we're not going to talk about poetry this morning, but we are going to talk about roads, talk about paths. We're going to talk about two. And so that will t lead us into even for our, our tithes and offerings this morning. We're going to uh, speak on, and so we're going to do that, and then we're going to teach a message, and then we're going to uh, pray over you. Is that okay? So can we do that? Yeah? Let's open in prayer. Father, thank you so much for today. I know we already prayed, but we're just asking you to um, to shine the light uh, upon our hearts today, before our path. We thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we receive your word with gladness this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so Pastor Evan and myself are going to be doing this together because I think sometimes it's good to hear from the, 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 the leaders of the house. And so um, we are one. When two get married, they become one. We lead together, um, although the man is the head. Um, I, I, I value what God has placed in my life. And, um, and I know that when we parent, we parent together. Um, 
And, you know, we're going to look at this here in a little bit. But in Jeremiah chapter 6, he said, uh, 6, 17, he said that he put overseers. He put seer, like, to, over, uh, in a, uh, to, to, to lead you. And that's really what a shepherd is. Um, and it says that they didn't listen, but uh, we're, we didn't believe we were going to listen. So, amen. Uh, why don't we do the offering this morning, if you go ahead and throw that scripture up. Okay, um, Matthew 6, 24. We're going to look at this and really um, just what Pastor Nate has shared. Um, specifically, I believe God was wanting to speak to the graduates this morning. But all of us can get something out of what God's wanting to say to us today. And um, really what it boils down to, I would say the whole message is really lordship (laughs) and who's your Lord. And so we're going to just talk about this for the offering for just a moment. Matthew 6, 24 says this, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or God and money. So what do we see here? How many lords or how, how many gods in your life can you have? One. One. Everyone say it. One. One. You can have one God. So if you choose to serve another one, you're serving that one. It's only one. It's either God's way or your way. And really what's this saying? It's either God or money. Well, what is really money? Why do we want to serve money? Be- the reason because, mammon's used there, not money, yeah. is because. Yeah, is because we want to serve, we want to provide for ourselves. It's in man's nature to say, I can do it myself. Right? Why do you see this in culture today? Be what you want to be, do what you want to do, provide for yourself, go out and make it, be you. Why? Because it's in man's flesh and in man's nature to provide for themselves. Yeah, mammon promises you the ability to take care of yourself, to do what you want, have what you want. Yet the thing about it is, is people have tried this for years and years and years, and it always leaves them with that still that God-sized hole in them. Yeah. Right? Right. Yep. And um, so even in our offering in our in our offering today i just felt like this was so key because it's such a good reminder that i think we need to be reminded of often cuz how many of you know i can choose a lord today and 2 hours from now it could be different <laughs> because of what something's in my life a circumstance a situation money relationships whatever it might be and so this is a great reminder to all of us to say who's lord who am I serving? And is money telling me what to do? Is life, is circumstances, is my job, is my business telling me what I can or can't do, who I can give to, who I can't give to, what I can do in my life, what I can't do? Or is it under the Lordship of Jesus and just what he talked about? Lord, what do you say? What do you say to do with my money? What do you say to do with my body? What do you say to do with my life? And when we come under that Lordship, There's blessing and there's provision there. Amen. So just this morning, I just wanted us to take a moment to reflect on who's Lord in my life. And it's so easy to just make that switch. Have I been relying on my job for my provision? Have I been relying on a business or my wisdom or my knowledge or my boss or the economy or whatever it might be for my provision? Or who is my provider? Jesus, Lord and Savior of my life, is my provider, and he takes care of me. Amen. So let's pray before we receive our offering. There's envelopes on the seats in front of you, and I know a lot of you um, give online as well. Father, we worship you. We thank you for these tithes and offerings, and we just say this morning, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord of my life. You are Lord of my finances. You are Lord. And if we've had you in the wrong spot, we turn that right now and we say you are our provider. You are the one who provides for me. You're a good father. And we just call each and every person in this room, every business, every job, every family, every marriage, blessed and more than enough to do everything that you've called us to do. We thank you that we live generously. We live open-handedly because you are our provider and you are generous. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And as they pass the buckets, we'll do our offering declaration. If you can put that up on the screen for us. And let's say this together. Father, today we pause to reflect and say thank you. We recognize you as the source of every good gift in our lives. 
right now, we come into agreement with you and say in this house and in my house, there is provision for your vision. In no way will we be limited to serve our generation. We purpose to be an extension of your goodness so others would experience you. Right now, we ask you for wisdom and to direct our steps into a place of overflow. Our lives will bring increase to your kingdom. Amen. 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 And then as we're finishing passing the offering buckets, I'll just go over our one announcement that we have today. And it's so exciting. We have our Memorial Day church picnic year two. So exciting. We are looking forward to this. This was such a great time last year, and we know it's going to be a great time again this year. And we know there's more that's been added to the Beyond Church family since last year. So how awesome is that? This is a great opportunity to just come together, to fellowship, to eat together, to play together. How many of you know that's important in a family? Yeah to have fun together. And so we're going to do this. So we want to encourage you, sign up. You can go to the Connection Center and sign up there or at beyondchurch.org and sign up to bring food. How many of you know food is great? We'll have Everyone's, burgers and yep, drinks. We're going to have grill out, but each dogs. of you need to bring a side dish yes. and a dessert. And if you want to be a part of the famous turtle race, you got to get your turtles yep. ready. So start watching. Start They're collecting crossing your the turtles. Roads. They are crossing the roads now. They are. So, They're you know, out. Uh, it's going to be great. Lots of prizes for the turtle race. So that was really fun. We're looking forward to that this year. So, yes. all right, let's jump in. So, uh, Brighter and Brighter, uh, title of this morning's message is, uh, what, um, let's see here, what path are you choosing? What path are you choosing? You know, one of the number one things that you've been asked probably in the last month uh, is this. Hey, Danny, what are you doing after high school? Hey, what are you, what are you doing after high school? Hey, what are you doing after high school? Hey, what are you doing after high school? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? And this is the question that, that we, uh, well-intended adults, um, or, you know, maybe your friends, uh, just, they just, they know that you're at a place of decision. They know that the season's changing. They know that your life is, uh, you have now, uh, in a sense, you're graduating into a place of you making your own decisions, 18, your life, you're going to build a life. You're going to build a life. And so they say, what, uh, what, 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 what are you going to do? So what, this title of this morning's message is, what path are you choosing? Maybe in school, you met with a counselor to help get you on the right path for you, right? Um, how many of you know that's not the counselor's job? That's mom and dad's job. But, um, uh, but it's true. It's true. Um, because, you know, there's, there's just a certain limited number of, of paths that they can put you on. Um, and it's based all on academia or academia, right? Academics. Um, you should go to school. You should not go to school. Are you planning on going to school or you're not? And so what is going to best prepare you to step into, into this world? But um, I, I would guess I would say this. I want The goal of, to this morning's message is to help you make that decision. Now, you might say, I know what I'm going to do. Great. But here's the question that we should be asking. Why? Why are you doing what you're going to do? See, because my why is greater than my what. Your why, the why you do what you do is so much greater than your what. Your why is a conviction, but ultimately it determines whether or not I've heard from the Lord or I haven't heard from the Lord. So you've maybe had a teacher tell you this, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. Actually, it's not. The word you come under is the limit. The word that you come under is the limit. So what you believe the word you come under is the limit to your life. Not the sky, the word. So if you're going to come under your own word, guess who's the limit? You are. If you're going to come under God's word, guess who's the limiting factor? God. So how, how, how many of you know that I, I would like, um, or you, you and I would both like to have me not be the limit? It's tiresome. My, my, when I'm the limiting factor, when everything depends on me, it's tiresome. Um, let's go ahead and look at the scripture here, Psalms 127, verse 1. It says this, Except the Lord builds a house, a man labors in vain or by himself or toils, and it doesn't seem to get, it, it, it does, you, 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 don't, you don't do it well. The next, the next pa- or same passage, the same verse, it says, Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guard stands watch in vain. In other words, he's saying this, that you are so limited in your ability compared to God's ability. 
It's, it just, it's so minute. It's so, so little to what, what God's ability. And, and the thing about it is, again, in this series, Brighter and Brighter, um, I want you to understand Jeremiah 1.5, and God is not a respecter of persons. Uh, he says this. He says, before I formed you in your womb, I knew you. So think about this. This is for everybody here. Before God formed you, he knew you. And before you were born, he set you apart. He appointed you. So there are some divine appointments. Have you ever heard that terminology? A divine appointment? I have a divine appointment. Let me tell you, every person in here has divine or heaven's appointments. Not just from this one scripture. Well, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. For you are God's handiwork. The New Living says it like this. You are God's masterpiece. You think, yeah, I just don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. Blah, blah, blah. You are God's masterpiece. You're God's masterpiece. And he created you new in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. The, the, the NIV said this. Um, he said those that we could do the things that he prepared for us in advance. So there are divine appointments. There are paths. Which path will you choose? Well, the best place to start on deciding which one, it would be asking not just what, which one do I want, maybe you would ask why, why, why am I going to choose this one over this one? Getting us to question why we're making a certain choice, right? Because I'm going to school, uh, mom and dad, you might not like this, but I'm going to school because that's what everybody else does, right, is not a good reason. I'm going to school, uh, I'm going to go to this college because that's where my friends are going. That's not a good, good reason. A good reason was I've, we've sought the Lord, we've prayed about it, and we believe this is God's direction for their life. And this is what they believe. They've sought the Lord. And that's what, this is like, we, did, we just got married. We just married these couple over here. Oh, cute, Steph and Seth. Uh, um, and one of the things that was asked of them just a couple weeks ago. Gosh, it's maybe it's been three. Wow, you guys are new, like you guys are got it down now, right? Um, but they've sought the Lord, and they believe this is the will of God for them to be joined. I, I don't just get married because I think she's hot. <laughs> Bad decision. Or or just because he has money, or whatever it might be. Or or here's the here's the even worse one, because I'll be left alone all my life. Fear. Bad decision. Bad decision. To make a decision that I, based on, I, I'm making the decision to go to college and choosing this career course because I can make the most money there. Bad decision. I'm do, choosing this because if I don't, then I won't. Bad, bad reason. Reasons mean a lot. Okay? So you're why. So, um, again, Proverbs 4.18, we're going to put it up there. The path of the righteous uh, shines brighter and brighter. Um, the path of the righteous, like the morning sun, shines even brighter to the full light of day. God's plans for you are, is for your life to be bright. For your life to be bright. And, and better than you think or could even imagine. And, and if, if we're going to get to this place where when you ask the Lord, what am I supposed to do? This is what we're going to talk about today. That you actually hear an answer. There's, there's a key for you and I hearing an answer and hearing what he where he wants us to go, what he wants us to do, how he wants it to be. And when I've heard and I'm following the Lord's direction and I'm desiring to follow his direction, I can trust his provision because I've come under his word. So the limit is not based on an economy. It's not based on this or not based on that. I, I was going to have my brother Jake, um, why don't you come on up here? This is, uh, can I have your mic? I, I didn't tell him this at all, so I'm putting him really on the spot. But he's, uh, Jake and Sheena, they're fixing to be moving to Minnesota. So um, why are you going to move to Minnesota? The Lord. Uh-oh. The Lord has directed us to do that. Okay. That's good. That's good. So the Lord, I guess I got two mics. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you hold on that one. All right. So the Lord directed you to do that. Okay. True. Why did you come down here? 14, 16, 18 17 years ago. Years ago 17 the Lord, years ago, the Lord, the Lord. The Lord. Okay. He led us. So... I was thinking about this um, as I was driving back yesterday, and I was thinking about the first house that you purchased in Alma. You remember that house? Purchased or occupied? Occupied. Yes. Uh, with, a, with a purchase agreement. Yes. And uh, 
remodeled was a the house. Rent to buy. Rent to buy. Agreement. Agreement. Remodeled. So with, with your yeah. Expertise. So we we together. You're young. We were we were, to, we were young together. First married. Just newly married. And so remodeled this house. Put all of your wedding money. Young and dumb. Okay. Young and dumb. The contract meant something. We thought. You thought. C, yes. Yeah. So, Even the uh, lawyer I pursued afterwards thought... Yes, yeah, the contract, you could have pursued it and, and, uh, and won your, your money back and all this kind of stuff. So I put all of his money, remodeled this house. Awesome, they're about to occupy. They've been renting it for a few months. Uh, the, and the person wanted to rent to own. Um, and, and they were going to close in three months. It's all the way remodeled. And they recanted on their offer. Yes. Or signed contract. They, they said, oh, this looks great. When, and they said, oh, I'm not selling it anymore. I want it back. And so they evicted us. They evicted you. That's right. And so that was a tough pill to swallow. Um, you were ready to fight, but then what happened? We there was a Lord, a word from the Lord about shake it off. It was I vividly remember listening to this message with Sheena. Creflo Dollar. Actually, or Rick Renner, or Rick one Renner. of those two. Yeah, yeah. But shake it off, and he was teaching about the Apostle Paul shaking that snake off when he was bit. Yeah. And so you were instructed of the Lord to do to what? shake it off Forget. and evict, leave. That was right before our vacation to Mexico yeah. with y'all. Yeah. And so we moved into your house, yeah. moved all our stuff out. And Doesn't she make got, sense. Does she it? got her house back, renovated. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good seed, right? Blessed. Uh, yeah, blessed. Bless her. God bless her. So that re- real thing, but that was that was a tough, tough decision. But it was based on the direction of the Lord. Right? Yes. So you made that. And then the Lord moved you into another place that was awesome. Better. Better. And then after that, you just... We rented again. Well, after that, after that house, we did take a step down into a, a rental. But the Lord brought us a fixer up, well, a, an opportunity home. Yep. Lakeview Estates. Home. And it was amazing. 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 With the help of several of you renovating, pulling stuff out, cutting stuff, laying flooring. Super cool. And so, like, the Lord directed you from here to there, and he brought increase in blessing. Yeah. And, and we do trace it back to yeah. that. All the way back to that. And I so, feel. To God's direction, direction, direction. So even now, um, with, with your house, you just sold your house. True. A year ago. A year We've been ago. renting in this family of seven plus a dog in a 1,200 square foot home. Praise the Lord. So they've been in this house for, for a little while, but when you sold your house, how did you sell your house? How did you arrive at a price? How did you? How did you... The Lord dropped a number in our okay. heart. And then we ended up dropping that number a little bit lower. Because because of your because the Lord's direction. Yeah. Okay. So the Lord's direction. How many of you know the Lord's direction is for your provision? But oftentimes it's for somebody else's provision. And that direction, just as 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 the Lord directed, the Lord directed, and the Lord directed, and you guys are fixing to move to Minnesota. Yes. And so if the Lord directed you there, and that direction brought provision, then then you can expect the same thing. Absolutely. And we will, we will see that. Absolutely. And so that's so cool. I just think this is a picture. They're, mo- they're moving their whole family. Did that make sense to move his family of five, with five kids to back to Minnesota? Does that, why, why, why was paper, that a struggle? On no, paper, no. It's not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Mentally, it's not a head decision. Yeah, it's not a head decision. It's, it's following the Lord. Yeah. It's following the Lord. And I believe what you're, what you're going to see is the same thing. You're going to see a life where you look back and you're going to have your children. You're going to have fully, you're going to have the things that, that, that don't burn up. Yep. Amen. Hey, thank you for sharing that. All right. So that's a, just, I think it's just a good, a good example to be able to see like when God directs, he provides. God directs, he provides. God directs, he provides. Where God directed, he'll also provide. Always. Always provides. And so uh, the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter and brighter. And I believe that that's, that I've watched that in his life. And I, I believe it's going to continue to be the testimony. Why do I believe that? Because of wishful thinking? No, because we have a word. We have a word. And we have a word. And if we come under that word and we're willing to come under that word, if you and I are willing to come under that word and trust that God's word for us is the best, you will find that your life will be better than you could have thought. And not only that, you'll find that, that even your family, uh, you, you, you're, it'll change. Like you might have been born on this side of the tracks, but you decide to come under God's word and you'll find yourself in a place that just just filled with God's provision. And, and a past and curses and all these kind of things. See, a curse is a word. Have you ever heard somebody curse? What, is, what do they use? They use a word, right? So have you ever heard of people uh, say, I, I, there's a family curse? Okay. You want to break the curse? 
come under a different word. You want to break the curse? You want to have more than enough? You want to own your own home? You want to have your children serve the Lord? You want to, what do you want? What do you desire? What do you desire? Because the Lord has good plans for you and has divine appointments for you, but it takes you and me willing to come under that word so that the limit is not my supply and my ability and my ability to, but, but the Lord's. And that place is a place of rest and actually a place of trust, a place of trust, but a place of rest. Okay, let's keep going here. So, um, what are, so, hey, what are you doing? This is the, back to the, the conversation about what are you doing? What path are you taking? What are you doing after high school? What are you doing? And maybe we could ask this to you that aren't graduating high school, but you're saying, hey, what are you doing this summer? Hey, well, are, are you, or you could ask this, are you, are you going on vacation? These are all questions. How many of you know people ask questions all the time? And you go, yeah, I'm going on vacation even though I don't have any money. Why? Because everyone else is going on vacation, so I'm going to go, so I'm just going to make my life hell. When I get back, and I'll just know that I have a credit card, and then Christmas will be coming, and all this kind of stuff. Instead of Lord, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to go? Where do you want me to stay? What do you he want? Hey, are you playing? Are, are you guys playing uh, football this year? You, well, because 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 he is playing, and he's playing, and he's playing, and he's playing, and he's playing. So, well, we that means we better play, right? Like. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why? What are you doing after high school? What are you doing this summer? What are you doing for vacation? What are you doing? What job are you taking? What, 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 what? All of these questions, and we're going to get to this this morning. We're going to get to, you know, why, or why, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And you could, if you could say this, this simple phrase that we're going to get to, this is like, in a sense, the scale that you measure things by. All right, let's keep on going. Um, so, again, except the Lord build the house, man labors in vain. Except he keeps the city. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3. By wisdom, a house is built. So we, we know that if I want my house built, if I want my life built, if I want to experience uh, something that isn't just, uh, just, just by myself, but he says, except the Lord build a house, a man labors in vain. But I don't want vain labor. I want the Lord to build it. Then you know what I need? I need his way. And the Bible tells us this in Proverbs 24. It says, by wisdom, a house is built. What is Wisdom. What is wisdom? Proverbs chapter uh, 2, verse 6 says this, For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. If you, want, you're, you and me want our life built, and we want a, a life built, uh, and not just whatever, you know, you know, roll of the dice, roll of the dice, roll of the dice. Some people win, some people lose, some people just, it's like Yahtzee, right? Like, oh, you hope, you know, they just rolled, they just, good, good for them, lucky them, lucky them, lucky them. I, I'm here to tell you my life has not been based on luck. It's been based on the goodness of God. It's been based on um, him, as Jesus as Lord. And he's been the one that's been providing every good gift. When things are hard, he's the one that, that's, that takes me to the others. Like, he's the one. He's the shepherd. Period. Proverbs chapter uh, 1, verse 7. Um, and this goes back to that, to this, the talking about take the shoes off or keep your word. <laughs> Take the shoes off or keep your word. Proverbs 1, 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So for you to even receive wisdom, for you to even receive the word of the Lord, you have to have the beginning, which is what? The fear of the Lord. Oh, I don't scare him. Like, he doesn't scare me. You know what I would love? I would love him to just show up with all of his power, and then you say that. You couldn't. With all of his might, all of his ability, knowing the end from the beginning. I mean, just. So, if wisdom comes from his mouth, and, there, and we know that the Bible tells us in James that there is wisdom that does not descend from above, but is just sensual. In other words, the senses. Um, what should we do? Well, we should ask. Jeremiah chapter 6, and this is a, would be a great life verse. Um, to, or really one to occupy by. It says, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. It doesn't say jump. It doesn't say, it says look. And then it says do, do what? To ask. This is huge. When? When do I ask? When, when should we ask? Every time. Every what? All the time. Every place of decision. Ask. 
You know what that, that, that right there does? That proves lordship. That's proof of lordship. Ask. Well, because my life's not my own. I've been bought with a price. I'm the glorify God in this body, which is his. It says ask. He says, where is the good way? Because, you know, just like that uh, Robert Frost poem, you can only see so far down before the undergrowth. You can't see what's around the corner, can you? No, you can't. You know how far we, we, we can see? Just, just this far. But in ages to come, I'm going to be telling something with a sigh. Which sigh depends on your decision, your choice. He says, he says where is the good way? Ask him. Ask for the ancient path. Where is the good way? Then walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Verse 17, I appointed watchmen over you and said, listen for, listen for the sound of the ram's horns. But they answered, we're not going to listen. I know. I know. I know. I know is a terrible place to be living from. It's so short-sighted, so nearsighted, and really um, blinded that it's unreal. Because we're making decisions of, I know, from decisions that we were, we were, we're, we were the created. We're not the creator. All right? Matthew chapter 11, 29, this is the verse that says the same thing. He says, take my yoke and learn of me. You know, when you yoke with, when you, when you yoke up to the Lord, when you hook up oxen together, he says, take my yoke. In other words, follow my lead, walk in my step. And he said, you'll find rest for your what? For your souls. This whole message, not just today, but the brighter and brighter really is this, this picture, this desire to say, Lord, put hope in your church. Like, what, what, where, let's keep hope before, uh, like, let our eyes, let our countenance, let us be filled with hope. Let us shine brighter and brighter the same way that when Moses came down from the mountain or, or the disciples were up with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, that we would look like we would had seen the Lord, that our lives really would be the light of this world, the salt of the earth, and, and we would be a city on a hill there, there were, where there was darkness, there would be light that, that we, I wouldn't be looking for life. I wouldn't be looking for light that out of of my bellies would flow rivers. So many times we're looking for life, we're looking for water, we're looking for, but he didn't design you and you to go on a search. He said, I'm gonna put Christ in you, the hope of the goodness, the hope of the glory, Christ in you. And out of your bellies is to be that flow. This is how God designed it, that you, in your life, is to be bringing life to you, through you, to others. Out of your belly. So this is what this is, this is about. He says, you, but you're going to have to take my yoke upon you. The path, the path, because we talked about, you know, looking at the promise. We talked about not growing weary uh, with the path. But, but if, if you, what path? Like whose path? The path, the path. Not the paths, the path. God doesn't just bless every path. He, he doesn't just bless every path. Bless. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Luke chapter 10. Uh, this is so, so cool. Um, Luke chapter 10, 41 through 42. You've heard this story, Mary and Martha. Um, Mary, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. You know what you need? You need to hear what God's saying. This is where Martha, Martha's busy doing things. She's busy cooking. And, and Jesus is like, Martha, 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 Martha. Um, I already ate. <laughs> anyway, I'm, hung, I'm not hungry. She's all trying to cook dinner. But, but Mary's at his feet and getting, hearing what he said. What did, what did, what did the Lord say? You're tr- you, know, you know when we're troubled? When, when we hear all the other things over what God says. This needs to be done. That needs to be this. This needs to be that. This needs to be this. That be- and this is where so many times we're, we're not in a season of life but we're in a season of decision. That's where she was at. She was in a season of decisions. A season of decisions. She was making a decision to do this and to do this because what she was hearing is all those other things over over what God said. I'll get to what God said when I get done with what I'm doing. I'm gonna just get through, if I can, I can tell you this for myself. If I can just get through this season, 
If I can just, because how many of you like to eat elephants not just one bite at a time? Anybody in here decide to eat an elephant by like just quarter that baby up? Ah, right? Not one bite at a time. I, I've been known to eat quarters, right? The whole side. Or, uh, 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 and, 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 and I could say, if I could just get, I just got to bear down and just grind and push through this. But really, in that time, is there's a whole lot of decisions. And even though I made this decision this way, the next decision, right? And it's, it's, like, it's like, you know what? I'm going uh, to do this this way. Why? Because I, I pause and say, Lord, how do you want to do this? How do you want to do this? At every decision. So look at this. This is where we, I wanted to get to. 2 Corinthians 3, 16 through 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 16 through 18. You know, we've, we've talked about this, how we're changed from one degree of glory to the next as we behold the Word of God. Okay? You've heard that scripture? We're changed, like into His very likeness as we look into the Word of God? Kind of. Kind of. <clears throat> let's go back up to, let's go to verse uh, 14. I know I didn't give, I didn't have that in my, um, I had 16 through 18, but let's go to verse 14. It says, but their minds were made dull. Uh, their minds were made dull. And this is, uh, I think this is the NLT. Listen, their minds were made dull. This is the NIV. This is the same word dull is this in the NLT. But their minds, or the Berean Study Bible, their minds were closed. It says, so this is talking about when, when, when the word of God was coming before about Jesus, their minds were closed. Okay? This is what he's getting to. But their minds were closed, for to this day the same veil remains over the people when even the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. So he's saying, I can read to you, and let me just read it from here. I'll read it from, from my translation here. But their minds were closed, verse 14, for to this day the same veil remains at the reading of the old covenant. It has not been lifted because only in Christ can it be removed. And even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil covers their heart. So now there's a couple things in play here. Their minds closed. So the veil is over, over here because they had a closed mind. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody with a closed mind? They, let me say it this way. They made up their mind. You're not changing their mind. They're not even hearing what you're saying at all. Okay? Have you talked to your kids about something and they, they're, they're, they're there, they're listening, but they're really not listening? They're, you can tell they're as hard as, con- I mean, just bounce, 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 in, not even in one ear, out the other. They've made up them, their mind. There's no convincing them. Your argument is vain. It's futile. Futile, all right? Um, he says, the same way now, he says, when, so the, w- when they read the law of Moses, they can't see because they made up their mind. But then it says again in verse 15, even to this day when Moses is read, a veil now doesn't just cover their minds. It covers what? Their hearts. Where, where is a child of God led? A child of God is led by the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God is the inner man in you. You could say your heart. You know, the middle word of heart is ear. It's ear. So when you're unwilling to hear, mind, when I've made a decision in my mind that I don't want what God says, when I've made a decision in my mind, and that one of the ways I make this decision is the way that the enemy likes to come, and he likes to get you and I to think we will miss out, the same in the garden, in the garden of Eden, when, when Adam and Eve were there, and, and, and the serpent was talking to them about all that they were going to miss out on, all that God was holding out on them from. They made a decision out of, out of fear because this is... So anyway, so we go back to when, when you make up your mind that I, I, I'm going to choose this, a lot of times we make up our mind not because we're trying to choose something wrong, but we're trying to choose something best for us. And, but what the author, or the, the reason, again, why, it often has this underlying of fear. Are you making a decision? How many decisions are you making right now, if you were to ask why, that you are unwilling to hear what God says because uh, I'm afraid that this might happen? I might, you could go from tithing. You could go from standing for righteousness in a generation 
that's filled with free choice of everything, whatever you want to be. You might have a child that um, in this day and age, they've been told you can choose whatever you want to be. And, and because of fear of losing your child, you want to come over and begin to agree with what you know. And you've, you're violating your heart, but you're making a, a, a choice. And so now you're putting yourself in a season of decision. But the choice it has been made out of fear. It's not been made. It, it, there's real, these are real things. You can make a choice for marriage. You can make a choice for school. You can make a choice for a hundred things. You can make a choice for not putting in for that job promotion or that job uh, opening when everyone tells you you're qualified, but you don't want to, even though in your heart you're like, I probably should, but you're like, I just don't want all the cares that are going to come with it. Did you ask the Lord if you should put in for that? Did you ask him? Because maybe, maybe the cares that the one that was before you had, all these cares, aren't to be the cares that you're to have. And there's a grace for that. And there's a direction. And there's increase in steps and all these kind of things. But because of fear, it keeps, it keeps me from moving or it makes me move. And fear is never the way God did not give us a spirit of fear. He doesn't speak by fear. But he one of power and love and a sound mind. What you'll find is the anxiety begins where the revelation of God's love for you and me ends. Where I don't know, where I, where I stop knowing the love of God, I start having anxiety. Ang- anxious thoughts about my tomorrow, like like I'm, all my friends are going off to college, and I'm just staying here working uh, at a Mexican restaurant or whatever. You know, you've got to speak Spanish slow to do that taco burrito. All right. Oh, thank you, Lord. Me neither. Um, let's keep going here. Verse 16. But anyone who turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So here's, this is what all this is about. It's about decision. And it simply is this. They made up their minds. I don't want to hear. And so now their minds are blinded. But not only are their minds blinded, their hearts are blinded. But whenever I just make this decision to do what? Just turn. It's, it's tight, man. <clears throat> It's all right. We'll see. Um, yeah, well, he says, what, what takes the veil away? God, what do you say? I know I made the decision to wear these shoes. I know I made this decision, but what are you saying? Lord, what do you, because sometimes we think because we, we made a decision, it's too late. No, you just get back on. I missed the turn. Rerouting. That's right. Rerouting. The veil's taken away. Now, now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And we who with unveiled face all reflect the glory of the Lord are being transformed into his very image with intensifying glory or brightness which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So here's what he's saying. is, You're in my life. When we turn to him, he takes... This is what's so cool. When I come under God's word, I'm positioning myself for that which has the ability to transform. God's word. Darkness, light. When I'm changed from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory into this brightness that he planned for you before you were born when he knew you. How do I walk in brightness? Listen, you might be a plumber. You might be a painter or a pizza man or a pro video game player. I don't know what you're going to be. You might be a pastor. You might be a mechanic. You might be a welder. You might be a nurse. You might be one of these. doesn't really matter what, what it is that you're doing. If you, you and I will look to him and, and measure it this way. Why are you doing what you're doing? I'm doing what I'm doing. First Corinthians uh, says this, 1031. Whatever it is that I'm doing, whether I'm eating or I'm drinking, what I'm doing, I'm doing it for the glory of God. That right there, what are you doing today? Do it for the glory of God. If you can't do it for the glory of God, you shouldn't be doing it. How, how, how do you know if I'm supposed to? Be? Well, you ask. You're willing to do whatever he asks you to do. Lord, I am willing to go to Africa. Don't say I'm not willing to go to Africa because you will end up in Africa, right? Say, so, Lord, I'm willing to go wherever you send me. Where, Lord, where do you, when I turn to you, the veil's taken away. And so many times we're asking the Lord for direction in our lives, but we're not hearing because we're unwilling to hear what we know he's going to say or we think we know he's going to say. 
And we're unwilling, but the reason we are unwilling is because we think what he says is not going to produce in us brightness. It's to produce brightness. So, so whatever you do, whatever, either drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That's all. Oh, that's one scripture. Let's give you another one. Colossians 3.17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name or under the name. This is speaking of lordship. Okay. Of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. First Peter 4.11. If anyone speaks... He should speak as one conveying the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should serve with the strength that God provides so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. God glorified. If you're tired of doing what you're doing right now, if you're tired in your job, if you're tired with school, if you're tired, then either either one of two things, either you're not doing the right thing or you've stopped doing it for the right reasons. Either you're doing the wrong thing or you stop doing it for the right reasons. So you, you got to get back to saying, you know what? I'm going here for the glory of God. I'm, I'm going to push this broom as a janitor for the glory of God. I'm here for the glory of God. I'm going to bring the glory of God to this school. I'm going to bring the glory of God to this nurse's uh, this hospital. I'm going to bring the glory of God while I'm moving this dirt. I'm going to bring the glory of God. I'm, I'm doing this for the glory of God. This is why I'm doing. This is why I was created. I was created for the glory of God. That he would be seen and manifest. Brightness would be seen and manifest through me as a plumber, as a welder, as a whatever it might be. My life is to display his goodness, his glory. Listen, he wants, when you do it for his glory, he'll make sure that your life is filled with the brightness. Your why is so much greater and more important than the what, because when I, my why is right, when I, I've heard from him and it's for his glory, that's when the glory, which we're talking about fullness, brightness, heaviness, weight, just, that's when his supply under his is, is, is unlimited to you. 1 Corinthians 6, 20. You were bought with the price. Glorify God in your body, which is his. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, Romans 12, 1, on the account or in view of God's mercy. Let me say it. Mercy, sometimes we get mixed up. Kindness. I urge you, I beg of you, I beseech you, depending on what translation, I beg of you. That, when he says, I, I, I urge you, he's really saying, I'm on my knees and I'm begging of you because I can see the kindness that God has towards you. To let your bodies, to, to, to surrender your bodies under the Lord because I can see the goodness that he has for you. If you'll come under, if you'll turn to him, he's, he's, he's begging. Paul's begging, I beseech you, I beg of you. In view of the mercy, I can see the mercies of God. To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. So, I thought it would be good um, before we uh, uh, pray for, for the youth. I wanted to read uh, a song of wisdom. This is the title of what, the excerpt in Psalms 37. Uh, at least that's how this translation uh, titled it. This is the, I'm going to read this out of the TPT, but before I do, um, let's read this, Psalms 37, verse 3, uh, out of the New King James. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. So, I'm going to go back to this decision. Any so many times, missteps are not because we desire to, to be or to do bad or to not go God's way. Their origin is one of fear. Fear of being left out in some way. Fear of losing my kids. Fear of not enough. Fear of fear. So, so many times, our missteps, they're not because we desire to do wrong or to not follow God. It's because of fear. And you know, fear is pretty powerful, isn't it? But so is love. Any direction that is one that is pushing you to do it because of fear of not having or getting or being is an anxious thought that says, or an anxious thought that says others are getting ahead. So you, all these thoughts, right? All these thoughts that cause you and I to make decisions and build our life upon things that are the sand instead of God's word. 
Anxiety, and this is where I wrote down, you know, anxiety begins where the revelation of God's love ends. And so that took me to Psalms 37. The whole chapter is incredible. And it really addresses these thoughts. You know, well, these people are getting ahead and they don't do this. I mean, everything works out for them. And look at how they live like this and da 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 and I'm doing this. So it does, what's the even point? Just forget it all. All right? You can begin to look at others and look at other people's lives and see what they have. And then you, now you want what they have or you make decisions to get what they got or, and all these kind of things. And our lives are not being led by the word of the Lord. They're being led by what others have and fears that we might not have. And, and this is a song of wisdom by David in Psalms, verse, Psalms chapter 37. You could read this whole, the whole passage. We're not going to take time this morning to do that. But it's amazing uh, how, how it reads and how it addresses these thoughts and these fears. I want to read it out of the TPT this morning, which is the Passion Translation. I do know and I understand that the Passion Translation is not a word-for-word literal translation. It's kind of like the Message Bible. I think it's more accurate than the Message as far as conveying the heart. And um, uh, go back to the if you have do you have the Passion up there? I can cool one. So this it says so don't follow after the wicked ones or be jealous of their wealth. Anybody ever been there? You know, don't, so he's, this is, this is a song of wisdom. This is the heading of this, it's from David, okay? Don't follow after the wicked ones or be jealous of their wealth. Don't think for a moment that they're better off than you. When you think for a moment that they're better off than you, guess what you do? You follow after them. Is that not right? You do what they're going to do. You're going to make, you're going to, I mean, how, well, they, that, how many of you ever went to had known somebody, or maybe you've done it? This person just won ten thousand dollars at the slot machines or, or at the casino, and the next weekend, guess where you end up? Why? Because somebody else better than you. Next verse. They and their short-lived success will soon shrivel up and quickly fade away. Hmm. You're telling me that God's ways, His word, the flower withers, the grass fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Yep. They should shrivel up and quickly fade away like grass clippings in the hot sun. Keep trusting the Lord. Keep trusting the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Lord, so again, this is the why. This is the why. Why, why are you doing? You're doing that? Why? You're going to go be a, do welding school? Why? Why? Why are, you, why are you going to school? Why aren't you going to school? Why are you staying here? Because I just want to just, why? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you doing, why are you saying yes to some of the things you're saying? Why are you got that thing scheduled or not scheduled? Why, maybe there's supposed to be a surgery you're supposed to schedule. Why didn't you schedule it? Because I'm not going to live in pain the rest of my life and I'd rather just die. Okay? That sounds like fear. Doesn't it? What, why? Ask yourself, why? This is what really the, the whole this morning was about why. And be willing to hear what God says. Because what will happen is, when I'm willing, the veil is removed. Keep your trusting in the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on what? The promises of God, and you will be secure. Feasting on his faithfulness. Man, you, you won't be hungry. Why, how? Because you're looking at the promises. You won't be tired. Why? Because you're looking, you're well fed. Why? Next verse. Make God the utmost delight and pleasure of your life. And he will provide for you what you desire the most. This is our life verse. Actually, some of y'all might not like this, but these are the tattoos we have on our wrists since we were kids. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. This verse in the TPT says, Make God the utmost delight and pleasure of your life, and he'll provide for you what you desire the most. And I can tell you this. As a young man, uh, as a young man, I thought the goal was to be, to have things and to make money. And the Lord really blessed what I put my hand to. Faithfulness, he, he increased us. But it wasn't what I was wanting. I ultimately, I was just wanting to do what he asked me to do. And I remember him asking me, what do you want to do? He said, I, want, I know what he was asking, and I wanted to do what he wanted me to do. So whatever he wants me to do, I want to do it. And I can tell you that right now, guess what I have? I got in my life what I desire the most. My life is so good. It's filled with so, he's just so good. I, I I can't even tell you how good he is. He's so good. 
I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just telling you the truth of my life. I'm telling you my testimony. My life's so good. My life's good. It's been good. It's been good. It's been good. It's been good. It's just all been good. And it's because of him. And I believe it is. I have a rock. My mom said, what's your favorite verse when we got married? And she got a rock and she printed it up sitting outside on my front porch. This verse. But I want you to see what happens when you delight yourself in the Lord and the pleasures of your life. He'll provide for you what you desire the most. And next verse, something happens. Give God the right. Give God the right. Here's what I want to tell you. Give God the right to fully direct your life. Wherever he says, stop, I stop. When he says, go, when he says, wait, whatever. Give God the right. And as you trust in him along the way, you'll find that he pulled it off perfectly. That is, that is a promise. This is wisdom. This is a song of wisdom. This is a song. You know, and I've, I believe that that's how God wants you in my life to be. A song. A song where it just is like of, of his faithfulness, of his goodness, of his of provision, of all those kind of things. Listen, the, the chorus, the verses, are they're, they're, they're different, but they, the chorus, over, verses will change. You, you'll be in this, this time, and you have this baby growing up, or you have this and these things, but the chorus is the same. He's been good. God, you've been good to us. So good to us. Oh, so good. And I believe that's what he wants for your life. He wants your life to be so good. You don't have to be afraid about tomorrow or wonder about all of the what's. But if you just do this right here, or try to do the do, I love it. This is something Craig Rochelle said a long time ago. I heard him say this when someone said, how is it that you're, you're, you have so many churches, it seems like God just really blessed you. He goes, well, I don't know, I could just tell you this, that we never set out to do the do. We just set out to please God every single day. Hmm. Could it be that simple? for your life, for my life, for our lives, that you don't have to chase something or some, or or a vacation or a house or a car or or a job or a corner office. You don't have to chase that. All of those things promise something. There's two promises or two bastards. One promises, but it's always empty. But if you and I would just not try to set out to get that, but just set out to please God every day, your life, you'd be able to look back and say, God, you just... You did amazing. You did amazing, and I'm thankful. Amen? Amen. You want to? Yep. Me too. Um, I'd like to have the seniors, if you can just step up front here. Um, I saw us. We're going to pray over you. Go ahead. Come on. (laughs) And I know there's more of you. We actually have a dinner um, with some of them tonight, but... Like um, Pastor Nate just talked about, and we just felt like this was such a monumental day for you and the message and also what God's wanting to do in your lives. And we've grown close to a lot of you over the years, but um, I can honestly say driving back yesterday, I'm probably going to be more emotional because one of my children is graduating, But and I love all of you all so much. But I just two. felt, huh? Two. Yeah. You too, Danny. Um, But I just felt so strongly, um, just, Lord, what are you wanting to say to them? Because I know this is such a monumental time, and it kind of reminds me of when um, we got ordained to be ministers, and uh, Pastor Hagen, who was our leader at the time, called us up to pray over us. And I believe these are moments um, when hands are laid on you or when you step into new seasons, God always has your provision in mind. He always is looking ahead. And I believe this message today that he spoke is one you need to listen to in the days and months to come. But also this time um, for what I believe God wanted me to share with you. And I'm sorry I'm crying. Holy buckets. Um, Yes, please a Kleenex. I heard someone drop a box. (laughs) That would be fantastic. Okay. I said I'm not a crier, but geez Louise, when it comes to God stuff, I just cry. Okay. But I wanted to share um, this verse with you. And really, I would call it kind of like a charge to you. Um, and one of the most important things, and have all of you made Jesus your Lord and Savior? 
I know you, so I believe you have. So I want you to say this, Jesus, out loud, is my one and only. He's my only Lord. I have no other Lord. I serve no other God. This is the most important thing in your life, is to know when you accepted Jesus, you didn't just accept him as your savior, you accepted him as your Lord, which means this, he is the master of my life. He is the one who directs my life. And you know what? College and graduating and moving on with your life is so amazing. It's a new season and it's awesome. But the world wants to tell you, now that you're out of high school, now that you're 18, now that you're, what is it, what do they say? You're on your own. You're out on your own now. Wrong. Wrong. You're never out on your own. You're never out on your own. It doesn't matter if you're 18. It doesn't matter if you're 50. It doesn't matter if you're 80. You're never out on your own. Why? Because you have a Lord. You just stood here this morning and you said, Jesus is your Lord. That means you have a Lord. He directs your path. He directs your life. So the world wants to tell you this, that your desires, your cravings, your appetites tell you what to do and you follow those. This is what the world wants to tell you. You do whatever you feel, whatever comes up, whatever passion, whatever desire you have, wrong again. Why? Because where your passion and where your desires come from are to come from him. When he gives you those passions and those desires and those ideas, follow them full heartedly. But not every idea, not every passion, not every thought that come in, comes into your mind are you to follow. What are you to follow? What he's told me, what he's directed me. So I want to say this. Your flesh can keep you from serving God. Did you know what? I woke up this morning. We just got back from vacation, long drive. My flesh woke up this morning tired and quite frankly, not wanting to come to church, not wanting to do anything. Well, what would that be? My flesh would dominate me to tell me, I, you don't need to serve God today. You don't need to do what I knew in my heart I was supposed to do. So you know what I did? I went into my closet and I said, I will to do your will out loud, out of my mouth. Flesh, you're not dominating me. I'm not being carnal. I'm not being dominated by my flesh. You've put a call in me. You've put words in me and I'm going to do that today. I had to tell my flesh. So your flesh wants to keep you from serving God. So if you have a desire that's contrary to what he said is good and right, then that, that desire needs to be denied. Well, how do you deny that desire? Just like today, I felt real fleshy. <laughs> but what did I have to do? I had to tell my body what it was going to do. I, my spirit had to overtake my mind, my words, my will, and I had to submit it to God's will through the words of my mouth to say, body, you're not ruling me. Flesh, you're not ruling me. So I want to read this passage to you. This is 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 20. They have it up in the New King James, but I actually want to read it um, here out of the Berean Study Bible. And I didn't give you this verse, but this is um, 1 Corinthians. And the church at Corinth was, um, came out of very, very, very carnal stuff. Very worldly. And so what they were saying is, hey, you know what? We heard about grace, the message that Paul preached. We can do whatever we want to do. Paul's coming into the Corinthian church and saying, you can do whatever, anything you want to do, but it's actually not permissible. It's not good for you to do whatever you want to do. Does God forgive us? 100%. Does the blood wash us and cleanse us? 100%. But our bodies are to be used for what? His glory. So Paul's coming in and actually um, bringing correction here. And it's ta talking about sexual immorality, idolaters, adultery, homosexual acts, thieves, stealing, greedy, being drunk, all kinds of, if you just think a world, this is what Paul's addressing. And he tells them this, that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. 
everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. And that's what I want you all to hear. I will not be mastered by anything other than what the Lord is commanding and telling me to do. My body will not master me. My mind will not master me. God is my master. Um, And then if you skip down to verse 18, so he talks all about that, but then he says this, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a man can commit is outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body and with your spirit, which belong to God. So this is what I wanna say. When you were born again, your spirit was recreated and made new and is to glorify God. But you know what? You have one other part that is commanded, not just here, but multiple times in scripture, that is to glorify God. And you know what that is? Your body. Your body is not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, what? Glorify God in your body, which is his. So this whole worldly mantra that says, my body, my choice, I can do what I want with my body. No one has control over my body. Not if you're born again. Not if you have Jesus as your Lord, your body is his. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Okay, um, and then just the last. um, So checking with him on everything that you do and asking him, is it okay or is it not okay? Going out into the world, doing what God's called you to do. Each one of you are doing different things and God's called you to do different things. Some of you may be going to college, some of you may not, some of you, whatever it is. But all that I want to charge you, we want to charge you, is do what the Lord's asked you to do. Not what the world's told you, not what peer pressure has told you, not what fear of man may be telling you. But Lord, what have you called me to do with my life? Then do that and go full at it. Full at it. So I want you to say this, and you can close your eyes, and actually everyone can say this. Say this, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I am a Christian. I'm a Christian. And my body, and my body does not just belong to me. It's not my own. It's not my own. I've been bought with a price. Therefore, Therefore I, will I will glorify God in my body. In my body. I check in with him. I check in with him. And I do what he says. I do what he says. Jesus, Jesus is, is my, my Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Cool. Let's just stand up. I'm going to pray over these guys. Lay hands on them. I know it sounds. <clears throat> you know, uh, Paul said that how I wish I could come to you to uh, and des- I desired that I could impart a spiritual gift. And there's gifts that are given. The Bible tells us, it teaches us this. And this is why, you know, sometimes you can just do things because somebody else did them and you just see somebody lay hands on. I think it's important for, for the congregation, for us to understand that when hands are laid on, uh, there's impartation. And uh, thank you, Lord. And that there would be even just, uh, I just believe just a, a time of impartation, of hearing direction, clarity, and increase into your lives today. That, that your lives, you would experience increase. Like where, where you would have a story or, or just that there would be a gift uh, to, into your life to prosper. Spirit, soul, and body. That you would prosper. And that would be your, that there, would, there would be no past that it defines you, but it would just be a glory story. What God says is the only thing that defines you. Amen. Amen. So just uh, you can just be in agreement. Just reach your hands forward. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just lay hands on Danny. Father, I thank you for an impartation and a light to shine bright upon the path of these feet. When you come, when you go, and you would know your Father. Blessed, increased,
testifying. Austin and Amy and, and uh, Ben and Joe. Uh, you do go ahead and follow us up, all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, we impart the grace. Yeah, to finish a race that I set out before. Discerning and increased in the name of Jesus. Increased. Ha, better than you could have thought, hope, imagine, or have heard or prepared for yourself. Better. Entered here. And so from here, speak. From here, declare. From here, from here, from here, from here. <laughs> and you'll laugh. And you'll laugh. And you'll say, God's been good to me. Stable, stable, and able. Well able, well able, well able. Stable and able. Two things that will define you. Stable, but able. All ability necessary by his grace, by his strength. And we thank you for it. We thank you for that testimony. In light upon the path, uh, ordered steps, um, and even just that you would be walking forward, but then you'd pause, um, almost like you'd let traffic go by um, to make the turn, uh, to be in the right place at the right time. We just make that de declaration. You're in the right place at the right time, doing the right things with the right people in favor upon your life, in favor upon your life. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll give all these guys a second to get through here. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You're not alone. You're never alone. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you that even as these, this family, we just thank you for just a family. Thank you for family. Just want you to just lift our hands to the Lord. Father, thank you for family. Thank you for calling us to a family. Thank you for instilling a name into these people today, your name, a family, part of a family, belonging. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just felt like we're supposed to just declare this together. I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. At the right time. At the right time. Doing the right things. Doing the right things. With the right people. With the right people. With the right motives. With the right motives. Amen. I you know, that's a you. that's a declaration you can declare. Mm. I'm in the right place at the right time doing the right things with the right people with the right motives amen amen Amen. Amen. well we love you all so much thank you for coming today and don't forget to sign up for our church picnic as a family we love you all so much and we will see you wednesday oh one thing if you are not going to enter a turtle in the turtle race but you find one i will have a turtle pool um, what I mean by that is ready. I'm going to be working on it this week to where maybe you're just the guy driving down the road and you want to pick up a turtle and bring it Wednesday or Sunday. I'm going to have a turtle pool and uh, a home until the race. So, all right. Bring the turtle.